What you doing? Santa Poo. What are you doing, Santa Poo? You want us to come in? You want us to come in? Say, come in, Mama. Can you open it? Can you get it? Oh, you got it. Uh-oh. What? Uh-oh. Let's go inside so you don't get any splinters on your feet. Oh. Give me my drink bag. That is not funny. You don't just steal my drink. That's mommy's drink. That is not funny. Well, it was a little funny, but still. No, this is mommy's. You don't steal mommy's drink, okay? No, this is mommy's. Can you say mommy's? Say mommy's drink. Can you say mommy's? So this is the secret to lasagna. And really anything that you make with meat. It's after you cook the hamburger meat, you grind it up even more with your hands. You smush it up. Yeah, you gotta hand crumble it. If not, then you end up with chunks that have no flavor whatsoever. Because beef has no flavor. Mm -hmm. And so your flavor's gotta come from your spices and stuff you add to the, to the entree you're trying to make. And so if you break your ground beef up really thin, then you don't have to worry about the flavor because you'll get it on everything. And it smells so good. I love the smell of ground beef when it cooks. One of my favorite smells. Uh oh. Uh oh. You always steal the camera with your cuteness. You always steal it. And you got her pencil pouch again. <laughs> you love her pencil pouch. <laughs> All right. So, we took our ground beef and we mixed it with three cans of Hunt's pasta sauce. And then he's making the filling. Which, what all have you done? You, you had an egg. Two eggs. Two eggs. Two eggs. And... Ricotta then, uh, cheese. Two ounce thing of ricotta cheese. And then, I usually put about three cups of mozzarella. Mm-hmm. And I usually put one cup of parmesan. Mm-hmm. And he puts the extra cheese in it because I like it. <laughs> I like a cheesy lasagna. He doesn't like it so much. But the nice compromise is we both like it when we cook it in the power cooker. So if y'all have ever seen the infomercial for this thing and thought about getting it, get it. It is amazing. And well worth it. We use it for several dishes and one of these is, believe it or not, lasagna. So it's just not your typical lasagna. It's a pot lasagna. But it comes out good. Mm-hmm. Looks all creamy. Does it look like lasagna, but it tastes like lasagna. Right. It looks like a uh, deep dish lasagna. Like a really, really deep dish lasagna. A deep pot lasagna. But it's still layered and everything, just like a regular lasagna is. But it's just in a stew looking thing. But anyway. So you mix all that together and then that's going to be your stuffing in between. We're to the layering effect. You basically take... What did you start with? The sauce first on the bottom? Okay. Yeah, you put the sauce on bottom first. Sauce on bottom, then the cream or the noodles? Then a layer of noodles first. Mm -hmm. Then you put your cream on top of that. Your cheese mix, basically. And mm -hmm. then once you put your cheese mix, then you start with another layer of 
falls, and then you build from there, going back and forth, back and forth. Awesome. And of course you can do this as a regular lasagna in the oven too. So we just use this uh, cooker because it really infuses the flavors better. And so we decided after we tried it that time that we love it in this thing. So we always cook it in here. Absolutely. So just make sure that when you use your lasagna, you get the oven ready lasagna. That way it doesn't stay hard and it'll cook um, the rest of the way that needs to. And it normally takes a little bit over one pack of noodles to fill up this thing. And that's because I usually build as big of a lasagna as I can. Mm -hmm. See? When you have four kids, yeah, yeah. try to stretch it as much as you can so it's less cooking you have to do throughout the week. Exactly. We're hoping that this will last us until Thursday night. Thursday night we'll have to cook something new. Here's hoping anyway. And of course, if we have a little bit left over, I'll have it for lunch, so. <laughs> and he likes to put it in the little Ziploc bag and then snip off the end and pipe it. Cause it just makes it easier to make it even and stuff so it doesn't stick to the noodles and all that stuff. I'm almost out. I'm actually trying to squeeze an extra layer out of it. Ah. I like to get as close to the top of it as I can, of the pot, so that way I know we'll get at least a couple of days out of it. You know me, I just can't wait till it's done. <laughs> I love this meal. I didn't get much out of this, so I'll probably add some cheese okay. directly with it to make up for it. Because I usually make it a lot thicker than this, but I was running out and I wanted to try to squeeze at least one more layer. Gotcha. The only thing I dislike about this thing is it's an odd size, so when you double your recipe, you have too much. Mm -hmm. When you don't double it, you don't end up with enough to fill it all the way to the top. But at least you're not wasting any. Yeah. That's my thought process, so actually, you didn't waste any. So I'll throw some cheese in with that. You know, we don't always get together the whole time to film like this, so whatever we do, it's really nice. But there's one final surprise. Well, I just want to have a discussion with everyone. And you know me, I love extra you cheese. Love <laughs> number three, each other. Yeah. Six of the eight. And Parmesan. My Uncle Joey's in heaven, he passed away. There's my Uncle Max. We have my mom. We have my Uncle Vinny. And then we have pour Anna. some salsa on top. We have my Uncle Dominic. Uncle Dominic found some research to do it in. And one thing that about this that's different than the oven when you cook it is the cheese doesn't like get crusty on top, I guess. It doesn't get crusty or pasty. It right. Stays, it's, it stays almost liquid. Mm -hmm. Like a melted cheese, basically. But one thing I did learn is, is don't make the cheese your top layer mm -hmm. like you do in the oven. Because yeah. then it, that top part of the cheese gets kind of weird. Mm -hmm. You make your sauce your last. Yep. Yeah, we did that last time. It turned out really good. So. Alrighty. It's pretty close. Yeah, I'm trying to decide whether I want to open up another can or not. Nah. It'll be alright. Alright, so we hit cook. And then where's my. I lost my place. Everybody gather around. Cook time.
And we want to cook it for. Oh. Wait, I don't remember now. That's what I wanted. Stew. Stew. Okay. In 35 minutes. Stew for 35 minutes. Okay, so we canceled that. It's due. Uh, did the cook time till it got to 35 minutes and then start. And now it's going. And so in 35 minutes, we will have a perfectly cooked lasagna. Ow. Don't hit the people on YouTube. That's not nice. You're hungry too, aren't you? I'm from Nebraska, and you're watching Cake Boss Live. I got my whole familiar here. I take that as a yes. And here's the cheese ball. Good morning. Good morning. Are we here? No. All he likes to do is watch himself. <laughs> You're so crazy. Can you wait till next week? We're gonna be open next week. I told him he came to the back door. He said he can't wait, and I promised I would try. Say hi, YouTube. Ever wanted to know how to make awesome garlic bread? You just use butter. And well, actually, you used two different things, didn't you? No, I used oh, garlic. butter and garlic salt. You were just running out, so you had to grab the other garlic salt. <laughs> okay, and that's it. You just mix that together, and then you rub it on or brush it on to your bread, and bake it in the oven. There you have it. Easy peasy garlic bread. How long do you bake it in the oven for? I usually bake it 425 degrees for about five to six minutes so the outside gets extra crispy. Okay. And there you have it. Threw me off. All right. So we are done with our pressure cooker lasagna. For those of you who wanted to know what it looked like when it was done, I totally forgot to have the ending of it in my last video. So I'm tagging this on the end this time. So we just put some mozzarella cheese and do we put Parmesan on top too? Yeah. Uh, mozzarella cheese and Parmesan sprinkled on top. And I don't put that last layer of cheese because it just gets oily anyway until it's finished so it can melt. And yeah. Um, this helps with the fact that it's a little watery on top. Um, it's like this the first day, but uh, for leftovers, it will dry out really fast if you take the water off, so we keep it on there now. Um, it just helps lock in the moisture some more so it doesn't dry out as quickly. So you can have several days of leftovers. And this will hopefully be leftovers to last us, at least through Wednesday. Yeah. And it's Sunday night that we're making it now, so... So there you have it. After 35 minutes, pressure cooker lasagna, and it comes out fantastic. Even better the second day than the first day, but it comes out fantastic either way. I'm more partial to the, sec to the second day lasagna than the first day. Mmm. Yummy, yummy. And we're going to eat. All right, and here it is on the plate. Doesn't look like your traditional lasagna, but it is a pressure cooker lasagna, so that's to be expected. So you got a bunch of the sauce and the cheeses and the noodles all mixed in together. It ends up being very yummy. Include this with a side of some garlic bread and you got a great meal in just 35 minutes.